okay so uh, let us uh, first finish this uh, 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 switch capacitance minimization uh, techniques and uh, uh, after that uh, we'll start talking about the minimization of the static power uh, uh, what we have uh, started discussing in the previous class uh, actually we uh, at the end of the previous class we are talking about the architectural uh, optimization for uh, uh, reducing the switching activity so uh, so uh, that was uh, actually uh, demonstrated with the help of uh, this technique architectural level optimization is uh, 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 can be done either by optimizing uh, data representation for arithmetic computation or it could be done by optimizing uh, the ordering of the operations optimizing the resource utilization or optimizing the glitching activity so optimization optimizing data representation for arithmetic computation so uh, we discuss about uh, this uh, accumulator circuit uh, and uh, uh, this circuit is designed for, uh, in in this circuit uh, uh, to uh, perform uh, the task uh, the data was uh, represented by two complement method and uh, uh, you saw that uh, the switching activity will be uh, very high at the output uh, at add output at this node and then at current sum uh, it will be less than that of the current output because of the low uh, pass filtering action uh, the main region of uh, the switching activity larger switching activity at uh, the current uh, at the output of this uh, adder network is because of uh, uh, the sign extension because uh, it was using uh, two's complement uh, representation for the number so a 4 bit data is being added with uh, a 14 bit data so uh, a lot of uh, so sign extension is to be done and uh, 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 and because of the sign extension and uh, 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 here at the output at this node a uh, lot of switching activity will be seen as we discussed earlier that if uh, the uh, range dynamic range of uh, the signal is very less uh, then in that case uh, if the sign extension is done uh, so uh, after any uh, arithmetic operation there will be lot of switching activity expected so uh, an alternative of this implementation could be based on uh, the sign magnitude uh, representation of the data so in the second issue uh, here uh, the data is uh, being represented by sign magnitude fashion uh, by sign uh, sign magnitude uh, representation and uh, in this case uh, uh, what you can see that uh, rather than using one channel for accumulator the two different channels are being used one channel is created for the positive number another channel will be created for the negative number so here the input data that is coming here is uh, the most significant bit the fourth bit will be basically the sign bit it will be either 0 or 1 so based on uh, that most significant bit the clock gated network can be designed and uh, the output data of this register can be channelized uh, to the upper channel or lower channel depending upon the number is positive or negative and this will be uh, uh, this will be facilitated by the uh, clock gated network uh, which is uh, basically uh, will be utilizing the most significant bit that is appearing here and uh, uh, if the performance of uh, this implementation is uh, uh, compared with uh, that of uh, the previous one which was based on uh, two's complement representation of the number then uh, uh, you can see that the overall switching activity in the second case uh, where sign magnitude representation uh, is used uh, is significantly less than uh, that of uh, the case where uh, uh, 
the two complement representations were uh, uh, utilized. So, uh, but the uh, uh, trade-off uh, in this case, when we use uh, sine magnitude representation, you can see that uh, the hardware uh, part is uh, uh, more uh, uh, complicated compared to the previous case, and it it it, it needs the additional uh, logic design of uh, the clock gating network, and also uh, uh, the hardware, uh, the upper channel. Uh, can see the lower channel is a duplicate of the upper channel so larger silicon area is also required so to minimize uh, uh, the switching activity we have to pay the price the price is uh, uh, the larger silicon area and the complexity in the circuit so here uh, again the performance of uh, uh, the two design uh, uh, is compared the two designs are being operated at uh, three volt supply level and then uh, for the different sequence of the input voltages the power requirements have been compared so you can see that if uh, let's say that the constant input voltage uh, keeps on coming if the constant input signal keeps on coming uh, to this accumulator then in that case uh, the two's complement performs better than uh, uh, the sign magnitude uh, uh, Sign magnitude uh, 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 version of that. So, because uh, in two's complement, since uh, the signal is not changing the sign, uh, lot, uh, in this case, the switching activity will not be very high and therefore the power requirement is less. Whereas, if uh, the signal is of uh, ramp kind, means it's uh, uh, changing uh, from minus to minus 6 to uh, finally, six and seven. Then, in that case, uh, uh, the two's complement uh, implementation uh, needs uh, larger power compared to the sine magnitude representation, as you can see. For random signal, however, uh, the sine magnitude uh, uh, representation, uh, the sine magnitude, uh, the design based on the sine magnitude representation is uh, uh, superior because. Uh, the signal will be changing sign so in this case the switching activities uh, will be okay. and the larger power requirement is there so uh, now the second technique is the ordering of the input signals so by ordering of the input signals also the switching activity can be minimized okay here one example is shown uh, uh, so in this example, what is done, it could be a part of, uh, let's say, multiplier. So in a multiplier, uh, shifting and uh, additions uh, uh, are performed to uh, multiply uh, uh, the two numbers. So uh, a particular sequence uh, here is, uh, just look at uh, this first picture. So in this case, uh, here, uh, there is an input signal, IN, then uh, there is a summer here and uh, this is again input and it's a shifter so this is uh, simply uh, input plus 2 to the power minus 7 into input input plus uh, 2 to the power 7 let's say into input so this is the output of someone someone is this and then uh, this someone is added with uh, 2 to the power 2 to the power minus 8 into uh, 2 to the power minus 8 into input uh, so this is uh, the total output is sum 2 sum 2 is uh, input plus uh, 2 to the power minus uh, 7 into input plus 2 to the power minus 8 into input is the sum 2 okay where uh, the same function is implemented in this uh, second uh, representation. So, uh, in second picture, what you see that uh, 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 rather than uh, adding uh, uh, the input directly with uh, uh, the term 2 to the power 7 minus n, first of all, the smaller terms are added. So, smaller terms, uh, definitely this 2 to the power minus 7 into input will be much, much smaller than this input. So, uh, in this, in the first approach, one large number, which was input, 
is uh, uh, getting added with uh, a smaller number which is 2 to the power minus 7 into input so output will be again a large number here and this large number is getting added with uh, again a smaller number so the output will be a large number here but in the second approach uh, what is done the smaller numbers are added first so 2 to the power minus 8 into input plus 2 to the power minus 7 into input is some one and then this is added with the input so input plus uh, 2 to the power uh, 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 minus 7 n plus 2 to the power minus 8 n is again sum 2 in this case so the both uh, implementation uh, uh, are uh, for the same function the, the same function is being implemented in both uh, uh, implementation but if you look at the switching activity you will find that uh, there is a huge difference between the switching activity in the two implementations. So just look at this first picture. So this first, first picture is showing the transition probability uh, versus uh, bit number. And uh, this is the shown for both uh, sum 1 and sum 2 for this first uh, implementation. So uh, in this case, you can see that uh, at the output uh, here, uh, at, at this node, for sum 1 and sum 2, for both cases, the switching activities are almost similar and uh, uh, it is also large. Lower significant bits here are uh, uh, the, the switching activity is uh, around uh, half, you can say. Uh, and uh, uh, when uh, for the larger bit numbers, the switching activity uh, reduces. Uh, uh, as you know that uh, a, when a small number, this, this is a larger number in and when it is added with a smaller number. So a smaller number uh, to perform this addition definitely sign uh, extension is to be done for this number. Uh, then only the two numbers can be added. And uh, if let's say that uh, uh, this implementation is, uh, 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 it has adopted the uh, two complement representation of the data, a lot of switching activity will happen as a result of uh, uh, the sum of a, uh, a big number and a smaller number. And therefore, uh, at the output here, sum one, there will be significant switching activity. And similarly, here, sum two, uh, this adder is also adding a, a, a big number, uh, which is uh, sum one with another a smaller number, sum two. So, because of again uh, sign uh, extension and uh, uh, sign extension, uh, a lot of switching activity is expected at the sum 2. So, you can see that the transition probability, uh, the switching activity is uh, almost similar at uh, uh, this node and the this node of this implementation. But if you go back to, um, if you go to the second implementation, so in second implementation, uh, the sum one, if you look at the sum one, so for sum one, since the two smaller numbers are getting added, so if the two smaller numbers are getting added, then uh, probability that uh, the switching activity will be less. So you can see that at the output of sum one, the switching activity is very, very less compared to the previous case. Means uh, the higher order bits here are not switching very frequently. But uh, sum two uh, has a uh, comparable uh, switching activity. At this node, uh, the switching activity is comparable to that of uh, the previous case because uh, uh, here uh, this adder is adding a uh, large num large uh, uh, a big uh, input uh, with the, a smaller input. You can see here. So. Uh, here, the sum two activity is almost similar to that of the sum one and sum two acti uh, activities uh, for uh, the first implementation. So you can see that uh, the functionality remains same in uh, two implementation. Uh, only by changing the order of uh, the input signals, uh, a lot of switching activity can be minimized. So uh, this could be one of the technique by which the switching activity can be minimized and the power dissipation power requirement can also be minimized. Okay, uh, another uh, technique is uh, the resource sharing. Okay, so this is explained with the help of uh, uh, two examples. You can see that uh, in the first example, 
there are two counters and the counter output is uh, being uh, uh, transmitted to some another unit so here the sequences are being transmitted to some another unit here and through the system bus you can say and this is a counter to so for counter to again uh, the sequences uh, is to be transmitted over the uh, different system bus lines so here you can see that uh, there is a bus capacitance like this case and uh, the two bus uh, capacitances may be uh, different depending upon uh, how uh, the buses are being utilized. Let's say that uh, they are uh, 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 in the two cases, uh, the bus capacitance remains same. So both has the bus capacitance C and bus here. Okay. So in the uh, first scheme, you can see that uh, the signals are being transmitted over the bus independently. There could be another approach here where uh, the two counter output can be uh, time multiplexed with the help of a uh, with the help of a multiplexer. So this multiplexer uh, uh, can uh, uh, help a designer to use uh, only a single system bus for uh, transmitting the data. So if this data is being transmitted at that time. Uh, 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 the output of this will be blocked and when this output will be channelized then uh, this uh, signal will be blocked so either of one will be uh, allowed to uh, will be loaded to uh, the system bus so uh, the same system bus is being utilized by the both counter here so if we uh, compare the two cases then what we can see that uh, in case one uh, the system bus, uh, this capacitance will be uh, high because uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it is uh, 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 the load capacitance uh, will increase in this case because the two different set of the system buses are uh, 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 being used. Whereas in this case, uh, the load capacitance uh, will be smaller than uh, this case but this in this case uh, the system has to be operated at higher frequency so that uh, uh, the signal uh, counter one and counter two output both could be properly time multiplex okay so in this case uh, system bus capacitance c bus is small but the frequency uh, of the operation has to increase in this case uh, frequency of the operation can be small but uh, the system bus capacitance C bus uh, may be larger. So, uh, uh, for uh, overall uh, dynamic power dissipation, proper optimization can be done uh, 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 in selection of uh, uh, the bus lines and the frequency, and uh, uh, the switching activity can uh, be optimized. So, uh, this could be one of the approach. By proper uh, resource sharing, we can also have a uh, control over uh, uh, the switching activity and uh, uh, we will be able to reduce the uh, power uh, requirement. Okay. So, with this, uh, 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 we will finish our discussion on uh, the switched capacitance uh, minimization technique. And uh, now, I will share uh, today, I will share uh, this uh, PowerPoint presentation with all of you. Okay, uh, if you have any doubt uh, on any topic, then you can uh, discuss that with me. You can call me or you can write an email to me. <coughs> so now uh, we will uh, switch to the next topic. So, I have to start a new PowerPoint presentation, so please wait for some time. Can you see the uh, slide?
Okay. So, having discussed uh, the techniques uh, that were useful for uh, minimizing uh, uh, dynamic power, uh, uh, now we'll switch to uh, the techniques uh, that could be useful for minimizing the leakage power. So uh, uh, the content for uh, this discussion will be this. We will be discussing about uh, the background little bit. Uh, then we will be talking about the sources of uh, leakage power dissipation. Then uh, we will uh, discuss about the realization of uh, uh, multiple threshold voltage in CMOS because you will see that most of the leakage power minimization, minimization techniques are based on uh, the threshold voltage. Manipulation of the threshold voltage, you can say. The threshold voltage uh, is uh, changed uh, so that uh, uh, a, a given an objective of uh, minimizing the uh, leakage current and the aesthetic power uh, could be achieved. So then uh, we'll be discussing about uh, the leakage power in uh, standby mode we'll talk about the techniques uh, that will be useful to minimize the leakage power in the standby mode and we'll also be discussing about the techniques uh, that will be useful to minimize the leakage power in runtime so uh, as you know that uh, the supply voltage is scaled down in order to uh, minimize uh, the dynamic power uh, dissipation in order to cut down the uh, power requirement uh, for the switching activity in the in a given circuit but uh, with reducing vdd we have to also reduce the threshold voltage because uh, if we don't reduce the threshold voltage uh, then the delay will uh, uh, increase significantly so up to certain extent uh, uh, the delay uh, uh, can be uh, uh, the uh, the increase in the delay can be uh, uh, controlled by uh, reducing this uh, threshold voltage. Basically, uh, VTH has to be reduced in sync with uh, this uh, dynamic uh, with this uh, power supply VDD. But as you uh, already know that this I sub means the sub threshold current, uh, which is one of the leakage current I sub is a function of uh, uh, ex exponentially related with the threshold voltage e to the power uh, vgs minus vth so reducing this uh, threshold voltage vth is going to increase the sub threshold leakage current i sub and if the leakage current increases then the leakage power will also increase and uh, uh, leakage power uh, uh, will be basically uh, uh, this leakage power will be referred as the static uh, power dissipation and uh, the static power dissipation uh, you can see uh, 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 there, there, there could be two techniques uh, for uh, 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 static power uh, minimization static power dissipation minimization one is uh, under the category of standby mode reduction and another uh, category is the runtime reduction so in standby mode reduction you know that uh, a, a large part of a given hardware uh, remains in standby mode for example uh, uh, as we have already discussed about uh, the clock getting so uh, when a certain section of a hardware is clock gated then that power, uh, then, then there is a no signal transition happens in that particular block. Okay. And you know that the clock gating can happen at uh, the modular level or it could happen at the register level or the cell level. So let's say that uh, it happens at the modular level. So in modular level, uh, there will be very big circuit uh, and uh, all the components, all the active elements of uh, that modules are in the standby mode. No switching activity will happen, but uh, uh, but the leakage uh, uh, will be uh, there because the BDD supply level is set to high. 
so uh, there there must be some techniques uh, that could minimize uh, the leakage when a given uh, 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 circuit is in the standby mode so uh, there are many techniques that are used to minimize the standby leakage current and standby power dissipation which are variable threshold voltage cmos technique vt cmos this is used to minimize the standby mode uh, leakage current and leakage power reduction then the transistor stacking is another scheme so transistor stacking is again very very useful for minimizing uh, the static power dissipation and then the empty cmos approach is also very useful and uh, uh, which is uh, 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 a, uh, innovative technique so this uh, empty cmos is also a, uh, a techniques which could minimize uh, 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 the leakage current and the uh, leakage power in the standby mode where are uh, whereas uh, however there are some other techniques which can uh, reduce uh, uh, the leakage current in run time these techniques are uh, the dual threshold voltage technique the threshold voltage hopping and the dynamic threshold voltage scaling so these are the techniques which could be useful for uh, uh, minimizing the leakage current uh, during run time and these are the techniques uh, which could be useful for minimizing uh, the leakage current during the standby mode of operation so we will be talking about these techniques uh, one by one in detail uh, in due course of the time uh, here uh, then i would like to tell you that some techniques are implemented uh, at the time of uh, uh, device fabrication or the circuit fabrication so those techniques are noted as um, static approach uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, were, that that is adopted to minimize the uh, leakage power dissipation and the another techniques are basically the dynamic uh, approach which are runtime approach so when the circuit is being operated uh, at that time uh, 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 with uh, uh, some uh, intelligent design uh, uh, these techniques can be invoked and uh, that could be useful for minimizing the uh, leakage current so uh, the techniques uh, uh, which are used for minimizing the leakage power or can also be classified as a uh, static uh, uh, approach techniques and the dynamic approach techniques okay then uh, then uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, we should discuss why uh, we need to reduce uh, the leakage power because we have discussed a lot about uh, reducing the dynamic power so what is the need why we should talk about uh, minimizing the leakage power so uh, uh, you need to look at this uh, graph that i have already shown you but this is very really very much relevant here so you should have a look at this so as you know that over the years uh, uh, new technologies uh, nodes have been launched by the semiconductor industry and uh, at the x at the y axis here you can see the state share of the total power consumption what is the share of uh, the dynamic power or active power and what is the share of uh, the standby power or uh, the uh, static power so you can see that uh, in 250 nanometer technology node uh, 85 percent almost uh, uh, was the contribution of the active power and only uh, the leakage power is remaining 15 percent but if this is compared with the 45 nanometer technology node now you can see that the active power is around uh, 30 percent and uh, the static power dissipation which is uh, completely undesirable because no uh, electronic activity is happening but even in that case the you can see that the power dissipation is uh, 80 percent of the total power dissipation uh, almost 75 percent uh, 70 percent of the total power dissipation which is very 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 alarming so uh, we need to uh, develop uh, techniques uh, that could be uh, useful for minimizing the uh, standby uh, power uh, or that could be uh, helpful for uh, minimizing the static power especially for uh, advanced technology nodes okay even in uh, 65 te nanometer technology node you can see that uh, the uh, static power has become uh, much larger than the dynamic power okay 
so this is the price we pay uh, for uh, 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 miniaturization of the transistor when we uh, when uh, we go for uh, increasing the transistor density on the chip we reduce the transistor size and therefore uh, because of uh, undesirable short channel effects uh, it will be very very difficult to control uh, uh, the uh, uh, characteristic uh, to control the different parameters of the transistor and uh, uh, this uh, uh, static power dissipation this uh, leakage current is uh, the natural outcome of uh, reducing the device dimension so uh, we need to develop the suitable techniques so that uh, uh, we could uh, minimize this because till you can see that 90 nanometer technology node uh, the dynamic power was the challenge so uh, those techniques uh, dynamic power reduction techniques uh, vdd scaling and uh, switching uh, uh, capacitance minimization techniques were very much relevant over this uh, technique but now you see that uh, in advanced technology node more emphasis should be given on uh, uh, our more research has to be carried out uh, uh, on the techniques that could reduce the uh, aesthetic power dissipation. So this is the motivation behind uh, 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 our discussion on uh, minimizing the switching power, uh, uh, minimizing the aesthetic power dissipation. <laughs> okay, so before we uh, uh, start uh, discussing about uh, the static power dissipation technique we need to first understand what are the different sources of uh, the leakage current and the leakage power and if we could uh, properly identify the sources of the leakage uh, uh, leakage power uh, then uh, we can uh, also think of uh, uh, minimizing techniques of uh, uh, leakage power, uh, minimizing techniques of uh, uh, techniques which which could minimizing the leakage power. So uh, in a transistor, you can see that uh, uh, the following uh, uh, leakage current can be observed. Okay, so here uh, the current uh, uh, are shown. You can see that I1, I2, I3, I1, I2. I3, I4, I5, I6, and I7. So these are the different leakage currents. We'll discuss about uh, uh, these uh, different components of the leakage current very briefly. And uh, we'll also discuss uh, what are the different uh, transistor parameters which could be uh, responsible for uh, these uh, different components of the current. So you can see that I1 and I2 are basically the junction leakage current because uh, we have a source, a source substrate junction and the drain substrate junction. So a depletion region is formed here and uh, depletion region is formed. And you also know that uh, the drain uh, and uh, the source and similar drain and substrate and similarly the substrate and source the two junctions are uh, kept in reverse bias so uh, when a tn junction is in reverse bias the reverse bias current the leakage current will flow so these are basically the leakage current i1 and i2 uh, which uh, which is uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, that can be uh, uh, observed uh, in a pn junction so then you will ask why the two components i1 and i2 so you know that uh, this uh, I1 uh, could be a uh, 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 I1. Uh, uh, there could be two different types of uh, 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 leakage current. Okay, uh, one could be because of uh, the quantum mechanical tunneling, uh, because uh, with uh, uh, reducing uh, uh, because of uh, uh, when when uh, the transistor size has reduced. So to keep a check on uh, the uh, uh, short channel effects, the channel doping is increased. So if the channel doping is in increased, then uh, we can have a situation like N plus junction, N plus and P plus junction. So if the two sides of a PN junction diodes are heavily doped, then there may be possibility of the band to band tunneling. So uh, I2 could be, let's say, that uh, band-to-band -band tunneling, and I1 could be 
uh, because of uh, the thermionic injection, because of the conventional uh, junction leakage current. I3 here is uh, representing the subthreshold current. So the subthreshold current, uh, most of all of you are basically familiar with. The subthreshold for the subthreshold current, the main reason is when the gate voltage is uh, less than the threshold voltage. When the gate voltage VG is less than the threshold voltage, so in that case the channel is not uh, completely depleted, but there will be some uh, mobile carriers available here. And in that case, if there is a uh, proper drain to source voltage applied uh, between the two terminals, then there will be movement of the carrier and there will be small uh, uh, current that will be flowing. So ideally, uh, 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 the expectation is uh, when VG less than VTS, the transistor should be completely off, but in a scale device, it is almost impossible to achieve this condition that uh, it cannot be completely off even if VG goes less than VTH. We have already discussed how even the circuit can be designed uh, when the, uh, 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 by biasing the transistor in the sub-threshold regime. So the sub-threshold current is very, very significant and it is a, it's a, uh, is significant. It's an important source of uh, the leakage current and the leakage power dissipation. So, uh, we need to develop techniques that could uh, be helpful or uh, that could be useful uh, in reducing uh, the subthreshold current. Then uh, I4 and I5. I4 and I5 are uh, basically uh, uh, the gate leakage current. Gate leakage current. Ideally, uh, in a mass transistor, the gate current must be zero. But now with uh, 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 reducing dimensions, uh, the oxide thickness is reduced and uh, when the oxide thickness uh, TUX goes below uh, 4 nanometer, goes below the 40 angstrom, then uh, there is a huge possibility of uh, quantum mechanical tunneling from the channel to gate and gate to channel and uh, that will give rise to the gate leakage current. So I4 is uh, basically the gate leakage current, you can say. I5 may be because of uh, the hard carrier injection. So in a short channel length device, the electric field in the channel is uh, very strong and uh, uh, a carrier which is moving in the channel region can acquire a sufficient energy from that electric field and can be involved in the impact ionization. It can hit a lattice nearby the drain region a neutral uh, lattice atom near the uh, nearby this drain region and give rise to electron hole pairs. So those electron hole pairs are also uh, can also acquire energy from the electric field and uh, they can also uh, 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 be involved in the similar kind of activity. So a lot of energized hole and electron pairs can be generated near the drain end, whereas holes are uh, taken away towards the substrate and giving rise to a substrate leakage current, the electrons which are present here near uh, the drain channel interface, they can be uh, they can be either uh, 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 they can enter into the gate oxide and uh, can give rise to the interface states, or they can cross this gate oxide all the way and can enter into uh, the uh, gate region, and uh, they can also. Uh, be responsible for a leakage current which is I5. So I4 and I5 are essentially get leakage current and these are also undesirable. Uh, the attempts should be uh, taken in order to minimize uh, these techniques I4 and I5 so that the leakage current could be minimized. Further this uh, leakage current I4 can uh, be either a uh, direct tunneling current or it could be a uh, follower uh, Nardem current. So both are basically the tunneling current, but the tunneling mechanisms are different. So, uh, but uh, collectively, uh, uh, they uh, but they have to uh, uh, they will be responsible for the gate leakage current. Okay, so I4 and I5. I6 is here. I6 is uh, you can see uh, uh, it's uh, it, 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 it is it is representing a uh, current which is uh, uh, because of the punch through of the channel. So you can see that uh, around the source and drain, uh, there will be a depletion region, source channel depletion region and drain channel depletion region. 
so if uh, the source and drain doping uh, remains uh, constant and the channel doping also remain constant and uh, uh, taking all these uh, doping constant if you reduce the channel length of the device then the two edges of the depletion region will uh, be approaching to each other and uh, there will be a situation there will be a channel length at which the two uh, depletion region will touch to each other so that is called punch through and if punch through happens then uh, uh, there could be a path for the current flow uh, uh, can be formed uh, that could uh, be at uh, near the interface or it could be near far away from the channel. So we call them uh, surface punch through or the bulb punch through. But punch through are essentially a, uh, if punch through has happened then there will be significant leakage current uh, in the device and uh, uh, a lot of uh, power dissipation uh, will occur. So these are the different sources of uh, uh, power dissipation and uh, leakage power dissipation. These are elaborated little bit here, but uh, I will go uh, quickly because I suppose that uh, uh, you are already familiar with this technique. So here is uh, the PN junction reverse uh, bias current. You already know this expression that current is uh, exponentially related with the applied voltage. So the typical order for uh, this uh, current density JS is uh, 1 to 5 uh, pico ampere per micrometer square in a uh, state of art uh, CMOS technology. AD which is uh, junction area is let's say around 6 micrometer square. So the leakage current order for the per device will be around uh, 1 uh, uh, phanto ampere. So if uh, let's say that uh, uh, there are a million transistor in the chip. Uh, then uh, and each transistor is leaking uh, 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 one uh, uh, phanto ampere current. So the contribution of uh, this uh, reverse bias current is going to be around uh, 0 0.01 micro watt. And considering that even a billion transistors can be fabricated on the chip, and uh, uh, in those uh, scale transistors, the order of uh, uh, the uh, junction leakage current will be even more, even uh, higher than in that case. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, component of the power is uh, supposed to be more significant. Okay, so band to band tunneling current uh, uh, is uh, another source of uh, the leakage current. So, you uh, as we discussed, uh, uh, this is uh, the region for the current I2. I1 was uh, basically the junction leakage current. I2 is maybe because of the band to band tunneling current. So, in band to band tunneling, uh, the condition is uh, if the doping of the two sides are very high, P side and N side are very high, then the depletion region remains very thin. And also, uh, 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 you can see that by applying a suitable uh, reverse bias voltage between uh, the anode and cathode the conduction level of uh, this uh, uh, N site will uh, go uh, below uh, than the valence, uh, valence band of the P site and therefore uh, the electrons will uh, uh, tunnel through this uh, depletion region and they can enter into uh, the N site. So electron tunneling is possible from P site uh, substrate to N site so which is a uh, basically give rise to a, a reverse bias current. So this is the region for band to band tunneling current and in scale devices uh, where uh, the channel doping uh, is uh, uh, relatively higher. So possibility of N plus P plus junction is uh, uh, there. So uh, this band to band tunneling current can be significant in those devices. Then the subthreshold leakage current. You already know this expression id proportional to vth e to the power vgs minus vth so by if the vth is reduced by some mean then uh, that is going to increase uh, the subthreshold current i uh, s t l c uh, whatever you call it it is uh, the subthreshold current and uh, it's related with vth so techniques that will uh, that can reduce vth will have a direct impact over the subthreshold current and uh, there are uh, uh, 
uh, many uh, there are uh, different physical phenomena that happens in the device like uh, drain induced barrier lowering body effect narrow width effect and the channel length effect of the channel length and the threshold voltage and effect of the temperature so because of these effects vth can be reduced and a reduced vth will be responsible for a larger sub threshold leakage current okay so i will uh, simply uh, i am going to skip this because i suppose that uh, you already have an understanding about uh, these techniques okay. so the another component uh, the uh, the seventh component of the current was uh, gidl gate induced drain leakage current so this gidl becomes significant when uh, the gate voltage vg becomes negative so uh, i will say a uh, little bit about this okay so if uh, get to source voltage is uh, negative vgs is negative then in that case uh, uh, the p substrate gets accumulated so uh, lot of holes will be available uh, below the silicon silicon dioxide interface so this side uh, the channel side it is kind of p plus region and uh, to the drain side it is n plus region and uh, so we will have a n plus p plus junction and just like uh, the band to band tunneling again that we have discussed earlier there will be possibility of the band to band tunneling here too and if the vgs is uh, even uh, significant uh, significantly uh, is more negative then uh, the depletion region uh, what uh, what will happen that uh, uh, if vgs is more negative then uh, the concentration of the holes will be even uh, Uh, higher here uh, large uh, concentration of the holes will be there and it is as if uh, the p side is uh, significantly doped and if it is so then the depletion region may also enter into the uh, n plus region little bit so here you can see the depletion region has entered into the n plus region little bit and uh, uh, this uh, uh, and uh, the another region of this is since uh, Uh, the gate is uh, at the negative bias voltage so there will there will be lot of uh, electrons in the gate region and these electrons will repel the electrons of uh, uh, the drain region below so electrons uh, that are uh, near the silicon silicon dioxide interface here will be repelled below so we'll have uh, the there will be combined effect of higher uh, p plus concentration in this region and the negative charge at the top of the gate so that uh, this kind of uh, the depletion region may be formed and this uh, depletion region uh, will be again further assist the band to band tunneling here and that will give rise to the uh, gidl gate induced uh, uh, drain leakage current gidl current which becomes significant when the gate voltage becomes negative so uh, uh, if uh, if we uh, plot the iv characteristics in the sub threshold so if you concentrate uh, in this sub threshold region then uh, you can see that uh, till vgs equal to 0 uh, when uh, we reduce vg the current decreases so with uh, increasing with reducing gate voltage uh, here uh, it is expected that the sub threshold current will also decrease in this region but it it doesn't decrease because of the gidl effect so gidl effect becomes prominent when the gate voltage becomes negative and that is one of the region of the leakage current so i would say that uh, there is a significant gidl current present in a structure so uh, that will leak more current even if uh, the gate voltage is smaller and uh, a lot of uh, uh, static power dissipation uh, uh, will be uh, there in uh, that device so Uh, while uh, while designing a device uh, for using in the circuit uh, uh, these uh, different uh, uh, design aspect uh, different design uh, 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 parameters should be optimized in such a way that uh, the impact of uh, uh, these different uh, leakage currents uh, should, uh, will be smaller and uh, uh, this way uh, the sub threshold current can be minimized to a Uh, 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 this way the leakage current can be minimized to a lower uh, uh, level and uh, the power dissipation can be uh, managed properly okay 
okay so as i said that uh, uh, large number of uh, techniques that are used for uh, minimizing the leakage current are based on the threshold voltage manipulation so in the same chip there should be uh, uh, the different transistors uh, uh, may need to be uh, may need to have uh, the different threshold voltage value for example uh, uh, let's say that the one transistor is uh, operated at vth1 so another transistor should uh, be operating at the vth2 where vth1 should be greater than or should be less than vth2 so the requirement of the th different threshold voltage up, uh, on the same chip is there and uh, uh, if we uh, are able uh, if we could fabricate the transistors with the different threshold voltage then uh, on the same chip then uh, the managing the leakage power uh, could be easier so uh, here some techniques are uh, discussed that are used to uh, realize the different threshold voltages on the single chip and these techniques are uh, basically the multiple channel doping multiple oxide uh, cmos multiple channel length and the multiple body box so we'll uh, discuss about these techniques one by one their pro and cons uh, in the subsequent slides. So here uh, 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 the multiple channel doping. So you know that uh, the threshold voltage VTH is a uh, direct function of the channel doping NA. And even this uh, the flat band voltage uh, uh, flat band voltage will also be a function of a weak function of uh, uh, you can say the channel doping uh, and uh, so the threshold voltage is directly related with the channel doping as you can see so by uh, reducing or by increasing the channel doping in a given transistor we can uh, realize uh, the multiple threshold voltage on the chip let's say that there are two transistors the two transistor can be can have the different channel doping level and therefore uh, the different threshold voltages can be uh, uh, realized uh, on a given chip but uh, it is uh, practically difficult uh, to do because uh, dual threshold voltage fabrication is a costlier please note that we are not talking about the single transistor a single transistor cannot have uh, uh, two threshold voltage value by changing the doping we are talking about the two th different transistors of a given chip so one transistor can have high doping another transistor can have the lower doping and so the two transistor may have the uh, two different threshold voltages so multiple channel doping then uh, multiple oxide uh, uh, cmos m uh, are also possible so different oxide thickness uh, for the different transistors can be uh, 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 is possible and uh, uh, that can be also uh, responsible for the threshold voltage and uh, uh, the basic principle behind that is uh, uh, this uh, expression you can see that vth is a function of cox cox is uh, what cox is epsilon ox upon the gate oxide thickness tox so if you reduce uh, TOX, then COX will increase and the VTH will decrease. If you increase uh, TOX, COX will decrease and uh, then uh, VTH will increase. So we can have uh, the two transistors can have the different oxide thickness and uh, therefore uh, they may have the different uh, two different threshold voltage. Okay, but uh, if we are increasing uh, the oxide thickness to achieve a different threshold voltage value then we should be care about we should be careful about uh, the aspect ratio because the aspect ratio is the parameter uh, which is uh, responsible for the short channel effects so if uh, uh, if uh, this air value uh, goes uh, above a certain threshold value thus uh, the uh, short channel effects will be significant and there will be another uh, undesirable uh, change in the characteristics of the transistor so summary is however by changing the oxide thickness by increasing oxide thickness the threshold voltage can be increased okay and uh, multiple uh, threshold voltage can be realized
on LED. Then similarly, multiple channel length. If we uh, don't change any other parameter except the channel length of the transistor, let's say that one transistor is fabricated at the channel length of one micrometer, another is uh, fabricated with a channel length of 0.25 micrometer on the same chip. Of course, uh, the different mask will be needed to define uh, the channel length for the two transistors. That could be a costlier affair again. But uh, by this technique, we will be able to achieve the threshold voltage because you can see that uh, at the channel length of uh, 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 one uh, micrometer, uh, the threshold voltage is slightly less than 200 millivolt. But here again, uh, at uh, around 0.25 volt, uh, 0.25 micrometer, the, uh, the threshold voltage is around 200 millivolt. So there is a significant change in the threshold voltage, and that could be catered in order to have uh, the transistors with the different threshold voltage on the given chip. Okay. But these are uh, basically uh, fabrication level uh, uh, techniques. So these are adopted uh, at the time of the chip fabrication. There could be a technique uh, which is uh, widely used for uh, manipulating the threshold voltage is uh, multiple body bias. So body bias, as you know, uh, is uh, uh, can play a role in changing the threshold voltage of the device by changing the uh, body to source voltage of the transistor. You can change the threshold voltage. So. Uh, on a given chip, the threshold voltage can be uh, uh, the transistors can have the different body uh, voltage, and uh, they will show the they will uh, poses the different uh, threshold voltage. But practically, it is difficult because in a CMOS, you can see that uh, in a N well, let's say that uh, large number of P transistors are fabricated, and the on the P substrate, large number of N transistors are fabricated. So if uh, we uh, bias uh, uh, if we bias uh, the body of either of the two transistors it will be simultaneous uh, biasing of a large number of transistor by the same body voltage and that uh, may not uh, serve our purpose sometime so uh, uh, the ideal situation will be that where each and every transistors of the chip can be biased by a different body voltage so uh, by ordinary uh, twin well technology, uh, it is not possible to do so. Multi well or triple well, uh, triple well technology is basically used to uh, uh, facilitate this. In triple well technology, uh, we can bias uh, the transistors at the different body uh, voltage uh, without uh, any interference. Or the another technique uh, will be the uh, adoption of the silicon and insulator transistor rather than ordinary the bulk transistor. So the SOI transistor, silicon and insulator transistor, the uh, channel, uh, the body of the transistor is actually isolated uh, from the substrate by a uh, buried oxide layer, by a box layer. So uh, that is uh, 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 that uh, 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 facilitates. Uh, uh, the uh, multiple body biasing in uh, 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 in uh, SY transistors without uh, uh, having uh, the twin well or other requirements. So multiple body biasing is very very important technique and it's a kind of dynamic technique. You can say that you can adopt it uh, uh, based on your uh, requirement. Okay, so we can stop here today. Uh, we uh, today discuss about uh, uh, the different sources of the leakage current and the leakage power. And then we discuss that uh, the threshold voltage manipulation is done in order to check the uh, different leakage current and the leakage power. So we discuss uh, how uh, the transistors with the different threshold voltage can be fabricated on a given chip. So uh, from next class onwards, uh, we'll discuss on the circuit level how the different techniques that I was talking about in the very beginning, like VTC MOS, MTC MOS, DTC MOS, uh, power gating uh, can be used in order to uh, minimize uh, the leakage current and the leakage power. So that's all uh, from my side for uh, today's class.
if you have any discussion if you have any question then you can ask your question anybody any question please let me know okay okay so thank you very much <laughs> to all of you Okay.